This is my Christmas lecture, <clears throat> and I'm going to say I'm going to say Christmas lecture. <clears throat> April seventh, you're going to see that we're actually going to discuss <clears throat> an issue that I never want to talk about because it's an overwhelming issue. So I'm going to put everything in one spot at one time because I get asked it a hundred times and I can't stand talking about weight because everything in this society is against you. You don't have a chance. One mistake can really derail you. So I'm going to put all this together in one time and get it over with and cover it next time because the way things are going today insurance companies only want to take your money. As soon as you're sick, they're not going to cover anything. So today, it's not the time to get behind in your health like it's never been before, absolutely positively. <clears throat> People have really enjoyed Dr. Jeff's short, simple lectures on CRA takes you back to the beginning, things that I covered years ago that I have no interest in covering now. And I've got great feedback from people that are enjoying attending his lectures. So people that would like to, I don't do well teaching this. <clears throat> when I lectured to the doctors, it was completely over their head because I've done this too long. So if you would like introductory stuff on CRA, that's the place to do it. And that will be, I'll go back for just a second, two of them, December 8th on a Tuesday or January 19th, just around the holidays. Call to reserve seating. <clears throat> All right, next. <clears throat> I put up the swine flu thing and somebody coughs. Two guys, two people cough. <laughs> CBS News actually said only 2% of all these people being tested actually had the swine flu, 2%. Most people had a cold. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I gotta tell the, you know, the, the, the public if they're allowed to continue this push like they're doing, next year is gonna be a surprise. Next year, it might be tied to your Social Security check. It might be tied to your driver's license. <clears throat> it might be tied to your travel. Maybe you won't get in the country unless you get a shot. <clears throat> so I'm, they're starting to draw the line in the sand as they push us. And I think you'll understand that before this lecture's over. <clears throat> Next. This is the year 2009, and finally, finally, the FDA caved in about mercury fillings. It took them to, they knew this back in the 1800s. <clears throat> Basically, it took to, right now, it's 2009, June 29th, and this was published recently, that <clears throat> there's a whole lot of problems with fillings. Heart conditions, Alzheimer's. Dental amalgams contain mercury, which may have neurotoxic effects on the nervous systems of developing children and fetuses. Okay, I want you to process that information first. <clears throat> Next. 
Michigan limits mercury from the coal-fired plants. They had to. We're the 19th state to limit mercury. Why? Because it's a powerful neurotoxin and is particularly dangerous for children and women of childbearing age. Okay, number two. <clears throat> number three. A judge in Washington denied a group's bid to prevent the government from giving pregnant women flu vaccines with a mercury contained shot. The judge denies the request for mercury free vaccines. Now, this is all in the same paper at the same time. I can get all this out of one paper. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> State lifts limit on mercury preservative in the swine flu shots. They lifted the limit that would limit the amount of mercury in vaccines given to pregnant women and children under the age of three. Does that make any sense? Doesn't seem to bother much of really anybody. <clears throat> mercury, they claim, has been eliminated from a bunch of vaccines, but it will be added to the bulk of the flu, swine flu vaccine for children and pregnant women. <clears throat> you know, one thing I wondered a long time ago, what, you know, we have the Asian flu, we have the Hong Kong flu, we have the swine bird flu. What do they call it over there? What do you think they call it over there? <clears throat> In the Daily Express, they called it the Californian flu. <laughs> it's the California flu. <clears throat> How many people are aware what's going on in the Ukraine right now? How many people have paid attention? And I look at the size of this crowd, and there's about 10 hands. <clears throat> You find out what's going on in the Ukraine right now. You study that up, because I'm not going into it. It will, I would expect this could possibly be coming to a shore near you soon. <clears throat> There's huge stuff going on in Europe with some strange disease, the pneumonic plague. Very strange things. <clears throat> One of my patients, that, refu that wishes to, rem she, in her words, she wishes to remain mononymous. <laughs> Our school system's a failure. <laughs> but man, can we do Jim good. <laughs> and we're even uncoordinated at that now. Just look at the tigers. <clears throat> I got this two days ago. Dear Mr. President, a letter to the president from a 12-year-old. He talked about changes during the campaign, like bringing the troops home from Iraq and Afghanistan to be with their families. He also talked about making a change with the economy and education being affordable. Mr. President, I haven't seen any of these changes yet. Instead, you're putting more troops overseas and families are losing their homes, with my father being one of them. And he also lost a job. When will these changes you talked about happen? Interesting to watch a 12-year-old girl share this letter with me. <clears throat> but with my unusually loud mouth, I have to apologize to the homeschoolers first. You always start with the homeschoolers because they've always been so protected. <clears throat> but I wanted to add a few things to her letter. At my age, watching a 30-year practice unfold in front of me. <clears throat> today, today when you go home, I want you to Google Bloomberg.com. Bloomberg 
Dave.com today, right now. They've just made $27 billion in revenue in the first nine months of this year off the taxpayer bailout, Goldman Sachs. 27 billion off the taxpayer bailout. The public is so incensed today, Goldman Sachs, all the executives are trying to get concealed weapons permits because they're scared for their safety. Bloomberg.com, the headlines. They're scared to death that the public is going to go after them. Today, in the paper. I'm amazed that I've witnessed people at train wreck now, I'm leading up to something here. My first little clip for Christmas, your first Christmas clip. People the train wreck the economy got a bonus. Hundreds of millions of dollars. And it doesn't seem to last them six months because they got to get another one. <clears throat> I've watched a health situation spend billions of dollars and to end up with the most special ed kids in the world. Not only special ed kids, I get to see billboards on the side of 275 advertising how many we actually really have. How many remember that when they were growing up? <clears throat> I got to hear a lot about weapons of mass destruction. We know they're there somewhere. We're going to find them one of these decades. <clears throat> I like when God says, I have to bomb these people because God said. <clears throat> I think they were on the wrong channel with God that day. I don't think that was on the same channel with the guy that I know. <clears throat> Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, and Bill O'Reilly have called me a conspiracy theorist because I'm so ignorant, I don't believe that two planes brought down three buildings. The math doesn't add up. <clears throat> the, ocean, the oceans are completely poisoned from one thing. What do you think the oceans are poisoned from? What we put on our food. What we put on our food. They're not poisoned from there's more poison from our food than, than the factories. Tw I went to school in Livonia. I spent 12 years in Livonia. I went to Taft School, Bryant Junior High, which is now a field, and Stevenson High School. I never saw an autistic kid in my life. Never saw what one looked like. 12 years of public school, <coughs> none in college. I watched Bill Clinton, Al Gore, Rush Limbaugh, and a host of others tell me NAFTA will be good for the economy. You just wait and see. <clears throat> My dad's favorite, this is your favorite dad, Nixon. Nixon and Kissinger said to me, I remember, we have to open up trade with China. Wait till you see all the stuff they're going to buy from us. <laughs> we have troops on over 100 borders across the world. Ours are a complete sieve. For some of you older folks, it was fertilizer that brought that building down. Well, if fertilizer brought that building down, I should not be eating the food that they are making this fertilizer with. By now, every single one of us was supposed to have a family member with AIDS. Every single one. How many of you actually have somebody living in your house right now with AIDS? Nobody. If your kid gets 38 vaccinations, he's going to be in good shape. 38. 
if you take poison when you're sick, you're going to get better. JFK was that lone gunman from behind. <laughs> His, boom, boom. One of my favorites, I'm sure one of your favorites. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> I'm watching supposed Christians in my lifetime start more wars than the communists or the other people. I'm going to bring the troops home as soon as I get elected. ASAP. I will not hire any lobbyists in my administration. If you stay out of the, you have to stay out of the sun. The sun's evil. The sun's bad for you. And last but not least, and this was just sitting there in my chair thinking of just a small portion, one of my favorites is to watch I Love Suicide Warnings on Antidepressants. Doesn't seem to bother anybody. <clears throat> they didn't put it on a bottle of Catalan. They didn't put it on the minerals. They, 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 they put it on an antidepressant. Now, to introduce this, now, you first you have to understand, I'm going to apologize to the crowd ahead of time before this, but you have to understand, I bleeped out everything not pertinent to this, but I think you're going to enjoy this clip. Homeschoolers, block your ears and put your head under the table. That's a private joke amongst my staff. Let it go. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street. There's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. My life has value. So, I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! I want you to get up right now. Get up, go to your windows, open them, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Things have got to change. How many stations does this You've go You've got to get mad. 67. You've got to say, I know it goes to Louisville and Atlanta. We're not going to take this anymore. Then we'll figure out what to do about the depression and the inflation and the oil crisis. But first, get up out of your chairs, open the window, stick your head out and yell, and say, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. How many people remember that movie? You have to be one of the older people to remember that. <laughs> That's when things are going reasonably well. I don't think, I don't know what he would have done today. 
Today he'd have came completely unwrapped. He'd have blown himself up right on the air. Uh, next. I like this headline, diseased African monkeys used to make the swine flu vaccines. Private military contractor holds the key patents. Why not? <laughs> now, next. Today, I would take my family and I would expect you you better take your immune system seriously today, extremely seriously. People are walking around today with lots of chronic problems. Now, I'm at the point of strengthening my immune system. The chronic earache, the chronic sore throat, the chronic bladder, the chronic fatigue, the chronic aches. I treat chronically infected people long term that's the biggest part of my day besides mechanical adjusting. People are sick and completely run down. The first thing you do is you try to find out what is it that's wrong with you to knock that out. I had the same sore throat the first 15 years of my life. I had all the vaccines, I had the antibiotics, I had the flu shots, I had the fluoride treatments, I had all that nonsense and I had to fire the pediatrician at 15 because I could see we're going on a downhill slide and I'm not doing this anymore. I was that guy when I was 15. It didn't take me longer than 15 to go, this has been a constant slide to nowhere and I ain't doing it anymore. I would rather stay sick than go see whatever magic juice this guy's putting inside of me because I'm done with it. I ain't doing it. No, I just had the same sore throat and I'd ask this yo-yo, does milk, every time I drink ice cream, ate ice cream or had milk, my, my sore throat would get worse. Does, Ice cream bar this, oh no, you can have all that you want. Well, I just, he didn't know anything about that, so I checked that off. I got sick of taking the same antibiotic for 15 years, so I'd ask my mom, where's the vitamin C? He ain't starting to cut pieces out of me, I ain't doing it. So the point is, I walked away from him at 25, Dr. Versendahl looked at me and said, you got chronic strep throat. I said, that's what I've had my whole life? And so he put me on Calamo and Congoplex, 15 cal ammo and six congoplex. Six weeks, everything changed. My life was different. Then I started to chip at all the messes that I had done. I had my nose cauterized, which is an old story. My teeth were falling apart. The other guy's cramming mercury in me as fast as he can. Get current, then start to rebuild your immune system. <clears throat> Go back to that slide. How many people saw Suzanne Summers on Larry King's show? Oh, that's right, it was on at the same time as The Simpsons. <clears throat> okay, well, it was good. I can tell most of you it was good. She talked about a number of her immune system. She was relating to how many natural killer cells she had in her body and how her immune system was that of a 40-year-old despite that she was in her 60s. That's how we raise our natural killer cells. That's for chronic immune weakness. I take that and that every day. And something else I would encourage you to have on hand. Next. Cataplex C is a whole food complex. Viruses don't like, it's not rose hips, it's about 30 foods that make up Royal Lee was a genius. Having cataplex C you can't die from an infection until all the vitamin C is gone from your body. You're not going to have a fever get out of control until the calcium's gone from your bloodstream. So learn simple principles of the body as a huge hit. Next. Scientists went to check the streams and they found every single fish in 291 streams was contaminated every single fish. They could not find one fish that they would consider was safe to eat. Not one. <clears throat> I think we're up at that next one, right? <clears throat> no, I gotta, this is the, Hank. I want you to watch 
This is Bush's buddy. I know, every, I'm sure everybody in this room has been nicked financially. Has anybody in this room that has escaped the beating somehow? One, one person. So that means everybody has been nicked financially by this train wreck. And I would venture to say, when you look at the prices of everything, everybody has been clobbered. <clears throat> Watch Hank. This is the guy they put in charge of the United States Treasury. And this is the one of the guys that wants to get a permit. And I want you to see why he wants to get a permit. There's really a total continuity of economic and financial policy. Geithner was on board at the Fed, the New York Fed, dealing with all these institutions. He didn't get it. And then we had this uh, fellow who came up afterward, Mr. Friedman. He was on the Goldman Sachs board. And uh, he didn't last too long as a Fed chairman. Why? Because he had a conflict of interest. Is it possible that there's so much conflict of interest here that all you folks don't even realize that you're helping people that you're associated with and you should be recusing yourself for America's um, ethics? Uh, I, uh, you know, I behaved with the... Uh, you don't think you should have recused yourself when you asked Lehman to go into bankruptcy, you didn't put Bear Stearns in bankruptcy, and then you folded... Mayor Lynch, into, I mean, isn't there some point where you got to say, hey, i got a conflict of interest here? You don't feel any kind of scintilla of ethics on this thing at all? Uh, totally. I, I, I operated very consistently He's very with the, clear. the ethic guidelines I had as Secretary of the Treasury. And when it became, uh, when it became clear that, that uh, we had some very significant issues with Goldman Sachs and with, with, with Why didn't you recuse with, yourself with Morgan then? Stanley? What I did then, it would have been very wrong for me to recuse myself. What I did was I went and got a waiver from the ethics agreement because when we had concerns... Who is in charge of the ethics agreement? What? Who's in charge of the ethics agreement that you got a waiver? We, we have, we have an uh, office of, of ethics at Treasury and we have a White House ethics office. So you got it from the legal counsel from the White House? We, we got it from the, uh, the, the, the government ethics office. So we had Snow, we had Paulson, now we have Geithner. All these people cut from the same bowl of cloth. Uh, these are not independent Treasury secretaries. They're uh, part of the problem, not part of any solution. And it would have been nice to see uh, President Obama effect some change in Treasury, but he, of course, he went and got a, a Wall Street insider uh, as his Treasury secretary. I wasn't that clear. He perfectly explained himself. Now, I'm supposed to believe they want to put, and I have patients seriously encouraging this, they want to put the government in charge of health care. The government. There's nothing that I've watched them run in my life that was not a 100% train wreck. There's nothing. I don't care, white, black, <clears throat> the last administration, they completely chafed my backside, and I'm white. So, some of you folks that got awful excited, we're starting with train wreck number two. And some lady asked that Kathleen Syllabus, whatever her name is, watch this. He's also overseeing the hijacking of health care by the federal government, which will nationalize more than 20% of the U.S. economy. And you want us to believe that a government that can't even run a cash for clunkers program is going to run one seventh of our U.S. economy. No, sir. No. I could not have said it better myself. <laughs> cash for clunkers, that would have been simple. By the time they got done with cash for clunkers, we sold all the foreign cars and we didn't have any. <laughs> I don't know. If you have lots of homework projects over the holidays, you've seen Charlie Brown Christmas enough, you've seen all the Snoopy stuff, the reindeer stuff, you can't sit and watch the same thing over and over, it's time to broaden your horizons. <clears throat> Just Google the fall of the Republic. It's pretty simple, Google it, you can watch it for free. And this isn't a Republican or Democrat thing, this is us against them. Next. I get this seven-year-old girl, might be having a little problem in school. This is her error analysis. Seven years old. 
This is her lead level. Now, where they lived, they didn't have lead. So I asked a bunch of questions, where'd this kid get all this lead from? Because lead will make you stupid. Lead will absolutely lower your IQ. It will tank your IQ. Lead will, I can talk to the smartest guy in town, and he will tell me he feels stupid. Lead interferes with your IQ, seriously. There's a huge percentage of people, we live in all these old houses. Now, if you had any clue how much lead we were getting in these old pipes, my parents still live in the same house I grew up in. I'll guarantee you they're lead-soldered pipes. <clears throat> Guess what, where we should got our lead from? No, next. She got all those dollar lipsticks from the dollar store from China. And they never told you the truth about how much lead was in those lipsticks. Dollar store lipstick. And we can't say anything to the Chinese, can we? All the Ch I, <clears throat> I had an investment guy in here this week. I said, what would happen if they said they were going to dump the dollar? You know what would happen if they said they were going to just put all those dollars on the world market? You have no clue how quick this country would be tanked. <clears throat> Next. I can, I'm going to make a copy of this DVD and give it to this nine-year-old one day. He, I didn't want him here. I didn't want his family here. They've been long-time patients. I treated this couple when they were single, before these two got married. So now Adam comes along. Adam's in a couple of weeks ago. Adam went for a sports physical. Adam has high blood pressure. Well, that's when it was checked after the fact. At the sports physical, it was high. So I said to one of the gals, get back, go in there and check his blood, let him sit down, let him relax, check his blood pressure. It was 118 over 78. Blood pressure was perfect. I walk in, you know, they're looking at this kid, you know, we might have to do some stuff, there's, there's some you know, kitty medications, and there's, there's things we can do. There's stuff we can put them on. The lady doesn't believe it at all. This is a football physical, and I've raised this family. So they bring in, I said, all right, Adam, tell me how this physical went. So this mean female nurse walked into the room and looked at Adam and said, take your pants off. <laughs> and this nine-year-old kid looked at her, excuse me, Take your pants off. You know, I don't want to take my pants off. Take your pants off. So this kid wiggles out of his pants, and he's standing in there all together while she plays jingle the hernia on the poor kid. <laughs> Jerks his pants up and slaps the blood pressure cuff on. And looks at mom and said, he has high blood pressure. Now, if you hold them down, we'll give them a flu shot. <laughs> <clears throat> Patient has joint pain in front of both of her knees. She had cortisone in one of her knees. Not both, just one. I walked in and looked at these knees on the x-ray. Let's see if we can get this up. You picked the knee that she had the cortisone injected into. But I only had five shots, Dr. Tan. I've only had six shots. I can't even see the knee. But I want you to know that's how decalcifying those shots are to your joints. <clears throat> and, well, hopefully this would come out good, but it's pretty clear for you, isn't it? Everybody can see the knee that had the cortisone shots. <clears throat> or you can't see the knee that had the cortisone shots. In this long, torturous career of 29 years, I've probably seen four people with ankylosing spondylitis. And I knew when I walked into that room, it wasn't him. I want you up here. This is your turn. I felt sorry for this kid. He's 22 years old. He was in today. I said, you know, you should, this, is, this is a serious story. 
Now, ankylosing spondylitis is a serious, debilitating disease. What medications do they put you on? Uh, cortisone pills. Um, How long? A year. Well, he wanted me. He kept pushing to get me on them longer, but I only took it for maybe six months because it hurt my stomach. Uh, methotrexate. Um, they give to cancer patients to lower your immune system. Now hold that for a second. I can only say this because House said it. I'm a lot nicer than House. <laughs> they had somebody like that. Don't laugh. I'm a lot nicer than House. They walked in, they were in the middle of the usual circle jerk that they're in the middle of, because they can't, they'll chop off your leg before they decide what to do. Oops, was, <laughs> we should have cut off your arm. Watch them in action. So the guy, that uh, one dude walks in the room and looks at him and said, put him on methotrexate. And the camera got right here in House's face. And I tell everybody on methotrexate this story, because I didn't say it. House said it. He looked right in the camera and says, that's bottled death. You can't say that stuff on TV unless that's bottled death. Methotrexate, next. Enbril, it's a shot. Uh, without insurance, it's like $1,200 a month. Enbril, okay. And his guy, I know everybody out there, would, he read the side effects and said, I don't want to do this. The side effects are worse than the disease I got. Did you get any shots? Um, tear it all in the back. I mean, tear it all in the back. I had all different problems um, from this um, AS um, that I need other stuff for ADHD that was just heightened. Maybe that wasn't um, such a big deal. And then on to painkillers and needed that and got you know into that big time too. Mm -hmm. And for you dudes in the seventies. He actually has a, a cannabis card. He has one of the first cannabis cards I've seen, which can help him. He can get this, sell this, buy the $1,200 shot. This is six years. I feel like an 80-year-old man. How many doctors did you see for this? Three plus um, physical therapists. and So at least three doctors had seen the x-rays. and Three? Three doctors looked at the x-rays. He's seeing a rheumatoid arthritis specialist. And narcotics don't help the pain. He's had this for six years. I feel like an 80-year-old man. Next. I put him on four droppers of fast food and six cal ammo. And you know what I said to him? Seriously? You don't drink enough water. Done. He said, nobody ever told me to drink water. <laughs> That's how stiff you can get not drinking water. Ankylosing spondylitis is one of the worst diseases you could have. And he's, it was second visit. I adjusted two spots on him. I had two, he had two discs out, L2, L3, C3, C4. He was 100% better on a second visit. Now he has to drink water because his blood was too thick and his joints were calcifying. And he'll be fine forever. <clears throat> Have you gone back to anybody with that? Have you, have you seen, huh? Keep it on the down low for a while. <laughs> yes, Colt. Keep that card in your pocket. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> Thank you for coming up here. <clears throat> One of my long-term patients said something to me. I want you to use my case at your lecture. <clears throat> liver failure. This guy was diagnosed with a dead liver. Hepatitis A, B, and C. The military has ways of, of getting you tangled up in these kinds of things. <clears throat> That's a hat trick, A, B, and C. Liver enzymes 495, ALT 272. There's the ranges there. Now, if you use Australian Silly Marin, I don't use the stuff that you guys have on the shelves. I go to Australia. That pill is 14,000 milligrams per pill. 
14 times 5 is 90,000. 70, Jeff, you're the scientist, 70,000. 70,000 milligrams of milk thistle. <clears throat> the niacin dilating food complex in a liver support. And you know, his doctor tried to look at this and said this is absolutely impossible to have these kinds of changes. But the point is, pharmaceutical grade milk thistle in high doses can do some cool things. Right, Dale? Dale, he's sitting in the front row. <clears throat> Thank you for letting me share that story. How many people in this financial age, you want to learn how to clean out your arteries? <clears throat> when my dad, men come in, the blood pressure's high, their triglycerides are up, their LDL's up, their ratio's a mess, they're kind of, we'll say, portly. They should be at my last lecture, my next lecture. And my dad sits out there, raise your hand. He's, my dad's 84. He doesn't care how tall. He's 84 years old. I want you to see what he looks like at 84. And so when he comes in with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, glucose leaning on the high side, I said to him, people say to me, Many executives have said to me, why are my numbers like this? I said, simple. You're a lazy, fat, salaried white guy. You've never done an honest day's work in your life, and you eat crap all day. <laughs> and you know what they say? 95% of them, yeah, you're, you're kind of right there. <laughs> yeah. I said, you go spend the summer with the Amish, and things will change. So you'll be fine. You spend three months with the Amish. You can eat all this junk, but you're going to work it off. So all my dad's friends, all his salaried friends at Ford, were told, this is a disease. This isn't a disease. It's a lifestyle. I told my dad, these are your numbers because of your diet, your inactivity. You're, that generation never exercised. So my dad basically has buried all of his friends. I've cleaned out his arteries, <clears throat> tried to get him to eat a little bit differently, supported his body nutritionally, and he, can't, he looked at me and it's like, he can't believe it. He just goes from funeral to funeral to funeral, and I said, this is, these aren't diseases. This is the food you're eating. The guy that cuts your lawn ain't you. You don't even open your garage door, and I want you to get up to change the channel every time you rip through the channels. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So. I get this young, fit man to come in here because he's heard about this artery stuff. You've got to learn what kind of family history you have. I know what our family history is. I know how to approach our arteries. It's the same thing. So this guy comes in here, pays a concern about his family history of heart disease. Mother had a double bypass. Father had a massive heart attack and a triple bypass. And his sister has heart stents. And he's 42 years old. These are fit people. David Letterman has one of these. He was running, he was jogging up to his bypass. So I send this guy out for a genetic clotting panel. I'm looking for some uh, homocysteine, some lipoprotein factors. So I told this guy, this guy's lost some feeling in his hands. So I'm working on C5, C6 to get his hand back, and I've got to do a real serious adjustment on him because his neck is really dislocated at the C5, C6 disc, which is giving him trouble writing. He was in Monday. And I said to him, I'm going to use your file at my lecture on Wednesday. So we ran a, this is a horrible clotting factor that will kill you. And his doctor wrote good next to it. That's good. Mm -hmm. We just, he just brought this in, we just laughed at him. Does he even know what this number actually means? When I've ran clotting panels, Beaumont's called the office, 
and said, what do you want these for? We don't have any drugs for these. I said, I didn't ask you for help. Mount Clemens generals called the office. What do you want these for? You know, we don't have, we don't have anything for this. This is one out of three heart attacks, one out of three strokes, one out of three people who died today, one out of three gangrene cases. These are all your fit friends, like Billy Mays. I'd probably check Billy Mays for one of these. They're simple to spot. The guy that wrote the Bible of Running ran 10 miles a day for 30 years and croaked at 48 in the middle of Central Park. They opened up his arteries, Jim Fix. It's called the Jim Fix Syndrome. Arteries cemented shut. He had 5% circulation in one artery with no symptoms. You can spot him. Sister had stands, my cousin, one of the gals in the back with me. In fact, the mother of the letter writer, the one that wishes to remain mononymous. <laughs> <clears throat> she has some serious clotting factors in her family. And in fact, her father couldn't drink his clotting factors out. Alcoholic's blood can be very thin. When you can get a bypass at 50, 52, and plug up six months later, drinking just as much booze as your body can hold, that's what a clotting factor looks like. One of the vice presidents of Johnson Control's wife had something similar. So I'll show you, if you do it right, she's gonna see, Olga's gonna see this in the waiting room. Was that mine, Dr. Ten? I'm gonna say, yes, it was. That's a, that's a 64 slice CT scan on her heart. And this EBT clinic in Birmingham or Bloomfield, they got to walk in. They said, how do you get zero plaque in every artery in your heart? They don't know what to say. I've never had over a 10% on this 64 slice. This is a, this is 1500 bucks. It's a boatload of x-rays that you don't want. And I've looked at my dad in the past at the lecture and said, see, Dad, I told you the pills work. We don't got to spend 1500 bucks out of our pocket to radiate the heck out of ourselves to see that. I told my mom, I don't need all these bone scans to tell me that you have osteoporosis. It comes with the territory. Next. <clears throat> I would encourage, I think this is Ralph Moss's website. I wanted to stick this up for people, cancerdecisions.com. It's a paid site. You got cancer? Look up that website, and he's going to give you all the information and all the options out there for your type of cancer. It's an important website to, uh, to look up if you've got cancer because that's a specialty, and you've got to work with that to be comfortable with it. I gotta get to some. How many people have been hospitalized with panic attacks in here? Anybody hospitalized with a panic attack? One. One. Well, I got an unusually healthy crowd. <clears throat> I kind of like this. You know, when I was young, they got me when we felt when we bought part of the program. I remember going to the Bahamas when I was a teenager, and you gotta put your sunscreen on. Well, I'm standing there looking in the mirror, and I felt like I was a plane. I looked like a plane. So when I go out on the beach and watch these people covered in silver, they're silver. How many people don't know what I'm talking about? And then when you're done with the beach, you go to take a shower, and it's like, I can't get this crap off. And then you go to dinner that night, and you still look silver, <laughs> and then, and it, hopefully in about three days, you start to go back to your normal color. And it's funny, because I always felt like I had just dunked myself in some kind of an aluminum concoction that didn't seem right. It just didn't seem right. So I'm done with that stuff. I've not used, I didn't buy. Now, God has a lot of reasons to kill Whitey. He's not using the sun to do it. Mike, you're first. You're first. That's my line to people. I don't think that's what it's there for. Absolutely. So now they're wondering, 
are you absorbing all this little junk into your skin that could be causing Alzheimer's? And I would not be surprised because I could not get that junk off my skin. Next. <clears throat> We were world famous since my last lecture for our marathon runners, our marathons. Did anybody here run in the marathon? How many people ran the Detroit Marathon? Anybody? One. Yeah, Mike, you roll through the marathon. 1980. I'll be nice and not say anything. I'm gonna bite, I'm gonna bite. Nadi would just roll you through the marathon. I had a patient tell me I was fat this week, so it's okay. You're getting fat, Dr. Tent. I had one tell me last week. It was special. And he said this before I adjusted him, which was a big mistake. <laughs> He's still looking south, going north. <clears throat> People asked about, somebody called today and said, are you going to talk about this marathon thing? <clears throat> marathon runners have the highest death rate of any sport. More people drop dead during marathons than any other sport. <clears throat> you know, you have some of these friends that are fit. Fitness and health is two different things. Fitness is not health, and health is not fitness. Two different things. Don't anybody confuse you. There's a lot of overweight people that are healthy. And fitness does not mean you're healthy. And I said to a number of patients that more people died in these marathon races 10 times more than are going to die at Dunkin' Donuts with both hands stuffed filled with a cream filled. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I wanted to do this one time, but I've never done this because you might be sitting next to a weird person. <laughs> you never know. If you, I'll, now I'll tell you this, in a comfortable environment, I don't, like, I don't like strangers touching me, in a comfortable environment, go around a room full of people and I want you to feel people's pulses. You will be shocked at how crummy people's pulses feel. You will not believe it. And I've, in the last month, to get this point across, and I, I very aggressively treat myself nutritionally. I don't have boats and planes and stuff. I like to invest my money in feeling normal. In fact, I got a 10.30 hockey game tonight, okay? I worked all day. I'm in a, I'm in a over 40 draft league, and it's a bunch of animals out there. And some people said to me, well, how can you go play hockey after your lecture? Well, Sunday night I had a hat trick, and it was a good one, and I'm still geeked to go try to get another one with these bunch of animals. I've overhauled my heart. I've cleaned up my arteries. You'll see me take these at 9.15. I told Kelly, tell me when it's 9.15, and I'll tell you what these are so that I can breathe on that ice and not keel over like one of these dudes. <clears throat> but you just sit and watch what people's, now, if you, I had 30 people feel my pulse in the last two months. Boom, 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 boom. And you sit and feel people's pulses. It's fast, then it slows down, then it skips, then it kind of fades out, then it comes back up again complete irregularity. Kids, young people, there's no nutrition in the food. You gotta have B vitamins in your food, you need quality vitamins and minerals, and you just sit with a group of your friends and let me feel your pulse. And I want you to hold it for a minute. And you'll see, I don't time your pulses, I wanna feel your pulse. And you'd be amazed that out of 10 people, five people's hearts feel lousy. And I'm talking as young as kids. <clears throat> Barry, Barry of the heart, cardiomegaly, what did they say those people had? Arrhythmia, 
cardiomyopathy, edema, heart failure, hypertension. There's a, the heart responds so well to nutrition. Let me, let me ask this. How many heart patients do I have in this crowd? Raise your hand. I want to see how many people's hearts I've treated in this crowd. <clears throat> now, you were told you had panic attacks. You came all the way from Las Vegas today. What was your symptoms? Joshua was in Monday, and they, and they slapped him into the, into the hospital, and he laid there, and they said they, uh, his, his heart was cooked. And they, by the time they got through with him, they said, your heart's perfect. And I felt his heart, his heart was lousy. He looked at me and said, it wasn't doing it when they ran the test, Dad. You've had moments when it clears up. And then there's had moments, run that test when it's beaten regular. People, I took 10 Cataplex B today, that's for a lot of reasons, but the sugar, the carbs, the sweets are roasting these people. So you sit and watch how much of this is out there. You will be in for a surprise, and you can feel it in their pulse. Next. I said at the last lecture, I did an eight-week overhaul to go back to hockey. Ten Cardio Plus and ten Ceruta. I took that today and I took that today. I take that every day because that keeps me semi-socially functional. <laughs> Just semi, not that. <clears throat> I use a ton of that on people. <clears throat> Why I would, for some of you veterans, this is going to be old news. There's a lot of rookies in the crowd. But there's something special I want you to hear about this. Because this is getting lots of attention. The Ukraine was extremely suspicious. Something happened in the Ukraine a month before all these people got sick. There's strange things going on. And I'll tell you, I knew something was up <clears throat> on 9-11. 9-11, everybody bought the program the first day, right? You had to. I mean, it was... Hard to ignore with what you saw, right? On 9-12, I'm driving down Meadowbrook in Novi. And, I, and every plane was grounded. Everything. They said, there's no planes flying today. Everybody's stuck where they're at. I get to work, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. You guys see what's going on in the sky? They're all, they're all over the place. There was planes doing stuff everywhere and I'm like something's going on <clears throat> I was just I was always watching this trying to figure out what is this but they should have taken 912 off their mistake was not to take one day off <clears throat> this is why I expect you to seriously get out the chronic infections out of your body or find somebody that can help you Start a different journey, because the world's changing. Could a strange substance found by a Southwest Arkansas man be part of a government test? Well, that's the question at the heart of a phenomenon called chemtrails, now getting widespread attention. Well, tonight, KSLA News 12 investigation reporter Jeff Farrell shows us the results of testing we had done about what's in our skies. Uh, it seemed like some mornings it was just crisscrossing the whole sky. They were just, it was just like a giant checkerboard. Bill Nichols snapped several photos of the strange clouds from his home in Stamps, Arkansas. They begin as normal contrails from a jet engine, but do not fade away like a normal contrail. Soon after, he saw particles in the air. You know, because we'd see it drop to, to the ground in a haze. Nichols then noticed the material collecting on the ground. This is uh, water and stuff that I collected in bowls. I had it set out in my backyard on my dad's pickup truck. KSLA News 12 had the sample tested at a lab. The results? A high level of barium, 6.8 parts per million. More than three times the toxic level 68.8. Armed with these lab results about the high levels of barium found in our sample, we decided to contact the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. They told us that yes, these levels are very unusual, 
But at the same time, they added the caveat that proving the source is a whole nother matter. Barium is a hallmark of other chemtrail testing, which even attracted attention from a Los Angeles TV station. There's already no shortage of unclassified weather modification programs by the government. But those who fear chemtrails could be secret biological or chemical testing on the public point to the 1977 Senate hearings in particular, which confirmed 239 populated areas had been contaminated with biological agents between 1949 and 1969. Later, the 1994 Rockefeller Report concluded hundreds of thousands of military personnel were also subjected to secret biological experiments over the last 60 years. But could secret testing be underway yet again? I'd rather it be something inert and benign, you know, something that's, you know, not causing any damage, but uh, I'd like to know what it is. KSLA News 12 discovered chemtrails are even mentioned by name in the initial draft of House Bill 2977 back in 2001 under the Space Preservation Act. But the military denies any such program exists. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12 reporting. And, you know, it this turns out until nine years ago, the government had the right under U.S. law to conduct secret testing on the American public under specific conditions. Only a public outcry repealed part of that law, with some exceptions. Now, Jeff's report mentioned high levels of barium linked to those alleged chemtrails. We wanted to find out exactly what effects barium has on the body. Well, we spoke with Mark Ryan, the director of the Poison Control Center. Ryan tells KSLA News 12 that... Short-term exposure can lead to anything from stomach to chest pains. Long-term exposure causes blood pressure problems. Ryan addressed concerns by chemtrail researchers that barium could be meant to wear down a person's immune system. Anything that causes ill effects in the body long-term chronically is going to affect your, your ability to, uh, because it's just it's constantly working on the body. So from that aspect, yeah, that's a potential. Brian says he's conducted research on his own about secret government testing on the public, but he's still a bit skeptical about the uh, alleged chemtrails, at least at the moment, because the Poison Control Center has seen no calls about exposure to barium. Can I clarify that last sentence? Because he gets his check from the man <clears throat> first. Dylan, come on up here for a second. <clears throat> My 12th grader. <clears throat> I know. My son is a motocross rider. He has, he's a serious motocross rider all the time. And I have to constantly tell him before he goes, pray before you do it first. And number two, we don't have any insurance. <laughs> we don't have any insurance. If you end up in one of them Medicaid nursing homes, Bubba the love snake is going to be changing your diaper. <laughs> and, he's going to, and he's going to touch it at the same time. So I'm telling you, I don't have any insurance. And you ain't going to like where you're going to be. Right? I told him that. <clears throat> Why is our health care system broke? My son's up north motocrossing. What, uh, where were you guys at? Vanderbilt? Yeah. Up in Vanderbilt, through the whoop de doos the motor, those are tough. The trails will beat you to death. We tried to do a 40 mile loop. I lasted 10 miles. And one guy, one kid with me, his age, said, I'm out of here. We beat 40 miles at, <laughs> get me out of here. So he comes home with his friends. He's got a gash about that long across his knee, okay? Just kind of split open. It's about 30, 35 hours old. I'm like, tape a chut. You know, I'm like, just butterfly it together. Now, mom is mom, and I'm a dad. Mom's like, you know, we might have to stitch this up, because he wants to ride tomorrow, and it's right across the middle of the knee, right where your leg bends, right? So mom's like, I don't want him to split this open tomorrow. So I, see, I feel pain. I felt pain. But I had to let this play itself out. You got to keep mom happy. So Ma is about 30 hours old. So Ma picks him up. And I'm cringing at the thought of this because I knew what was going to happen. Drives her up to Providence Center. 
at uh, Wixom Road and 96, right? The new level one trauma center. The marble ceilings and everything's stainless and the most expensive machines. And if you get your head chopped off, you can go to a level one trauma center. <laughs> so I'm just holding my breath. And your treatment there consisted of? Um, they put water on my knee, distilled water and uh, neosporin, and told me they couldn't stitch it up because it was too old. Okay. Water, neosporum, and they couldn't stitch it up because it was old. Oh, and they used a little bit of gauze too, you know. And they used, that's it. Distilled water, a little bit of neosporum, and some gauze. And they said, too old to stitch up. Which, by the way, we did when we were up north and right after the injury happened. We put all that on my knee. Just to throw that out there, and then we get the bill. How much do you think the bill was? I think a lot of you guys need x-rays. I can feel x-rays in the crowd. When we bought the Neosporin from CVS, it was about maybe $25 with the gauze and everything. So let's, let, how much do they think $800. I don't have any insurance. Eight. <clears throat> You wonder why we don't go near these places? I'm not going near these places. 800 bucks, distilled water, a tiny piece of gauze, and it was about a half an inch long. <laughs> so A, our health system is completely broke, overwhelmingly broke, but if you think it's gonna get cheaper, putting the government in charge. Ha <laughs> ha, that's just, <laughs> We got to print $75 billion to cover the surge. Remember, I don't have any insurance. <laughs> I <have> insurance. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> Splenda, everybody's into these new. Splenda will roast your intestinal germs. And some of the literature says you will have trouble getting it back. You will have trouble getting it back. Splenda. <clears throat> Next. Do I have a, uh, do we have those probiotics? I mean, for the presence? Okay. Amazing. Pathogenic bacteria. <clears throat> it overwhelms me. <clears throat> to think that 80% of your defense, your immune systems, and your colon, you've got to have healthy germ. And our food supply is whacked. And as I get older and experience the joy, I'm watching 60 Minutes. There's a special about a Midwestern food grocery store, like our Farmer Jack or something like that. They showed all his food. And they had this hidden camera, they're watching his food, and all of a sudden, it was all spoiled. It was all out of date. So on camera, they had him pick everything up, take it in the back room, take the old label off, put the new label on, three weeks down the road, and all of a sudden, it all turned fresh again. And it was instantly fresh. <clears throat> I eat out all the time. Every once in a while, I'm getting serious about throwing a very high quality. That's one. That's the kind of, this is huge. From Salmonella to Klebsiella to the strep to Pseudomonas, these are some very virulent E. coli. There's a huge beef recall in the paper today. They recalled it from all the stores and left it in the kids' lunches. Ah, there's too many people anyway. <laughs> Next. <clears throat> C. diff, you're hearing that word from the hospital. I would learn to get some, not your simple stuff. This. Next. This. I like the way this was promoted. Soil for the colon. <clears throat> Soil for the colon. And I have gotten, I don't, you know, this is the stuff you do after the antibiotics or the hospitals and all this food poisoning and stuff. 
Learn to have some things on hand to keep your gut happy. That's why you people come in and you try to say something to me that drives me nuts. When somebody, I, you know, they get food poisoning. Well, my sister ain't the same thing and she didn't get it. Well, <clears throat> those are stupid things to say to me. <laughs> okay, I know, <laughs> but Bill Gates invented something and you didn't and you guys both have brains. <clears throat> so this you ain't, that's like asking George Burns, how'd you live to 90? Eight martinis a day, eight cigars, and three women. Well, that's not, how come I can't do that? Well, because not everybody can do that and get away with that. Their body's only going to take so much. <clears throat> so we watch people and think we can get away with stuff like that. You're not going to be able to take the same beating. There's a lot of genetics to this. <clears throat> now, Jeff, you missed this. You missed the Cedar Point journey, didn't you? <clears throat> Me and Rick, raise your hand, Rick. Five of us, I was reluctantly, I'm going to admit this, dragged to Cedar Point with five guys that were in their 40s and 50s. Five guys. And five of us, we walked around Cedar Point, and me and Rick were sitting there watching these guys walk by, or kind of guys. <laughs> and I'm watching this. I said, Rick, does anything seem funny about this? They had capri pants on. <laughs> they had some girly sandals on. They had their purse. They had their, their makeup. They were done, and they had that little stylish haircut, and they had a little tattoo, <clears throat> and they had a kind of a special little walk, <laughs> like a couple of my waiters. I come back from a couple of these restaurants, and I used to see if that was special. Now, you got to understand something that I'm going to, we can't judge folks because there's a lot of people today that are having their genders confused by the environment. So you can't pick on these people. You can't judge. It's not your spot to judge. <clears throat> I'm not going to judge anybody because you can't. It's not our job. But I watched the most feminine. The men are being creamed as we speak. Creamed. They're being sterilized <clears throat> as we speak. Sterilized. <clears throat> Do you realize Sperm counts are falling so fast that young men only have a third as much fertility as their fathers, as their living fathers, down to the level of a hamster. A hamster. Gender-bending chemicals are increasingly being blamed for the mystery of the lost boys. Babies who normally should be male who've been born as girls. All my, how many teachers do I have here to teach under seventh grade? <clears throat> how many of you have noticed, like talking to Calvin and Ruth, I told Ruth about this last year, and she had a little project for, she teaches kindergarten. She had a little project for the class. And she said, I can't believe you said that. All the girls stand up and get on this side of the class, and all the boys stand up and get on this kind of class. And she looked. And she's like, my gosh, my class is all girls. Today, I, about a week ago, I said to Ruth, how's your class this year? She said, 14 girls and seven boys. How many of your classes are dominated to women? To be a young testosterone man today, the world is at your feet. You're going to have your pick of the litter. The classes, it's all girls. And half the guys are kind of confused. Are you confused? Huh? Are you sure? Uh, get, go through his computer. I want to find out what's going on. <clears throat> Gender bending. Next. Scientists around the world 
as the FDA said this is safe, that's what they said about mercury for a thousand years. <clears throat> the pacifiers in your kid's mouth, the plastic bottles you heated their little stuff in, your Tupperware containers, <clears throat> the meat shake. I had, a, I had an estrogen soaked T bone today. A completely estrogen. I knew I was going to get one good meal. I had a, I had a protein shake. 10 cataplex B and 3 ginkgo before this lecture. I was taking all that at 6.30. <clears throat> Research has implicated BPA, all these plastic bottles, as an endocrine disruptor that mimics the effects of estrogen, leading to developmental and reproductive de defects, hampered immune function, brain damage, disease, diabetes, and heart disease. I'll be talking about some of this. Estrogen makes you fat. There was a show on last week. It was a documentary about Woodstock. Going through the channel. Did you see that documentary about Woodstock? And, you know, I grew up, people were like, did you go to, did you go to Woodstock? Me, <clears throat> me and the boys, three days of mud, rain, no toilets, and no food. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? You couldn't have dragged us there with a chain. But to look at this sea of Woodstock people, I said to the kids, look at this. They're all thin. They had their shirts off. There wasn't one fat person, no offense to the fat people, in the entire, all those people, as that camera panned, not one. It was a great and everybody had their shirts off. So the point is, when I say to these people, we don't have a chance. That's this weight lecture. It affects me. It affects my relatives. It affects all of us. You have to hit this thing on all sides because you don't have a chance. You don't have, you take, do you realize prenatal estrogen exposure in the womb has a ton to do with your baby's testosterone levels throughout life, just in the womb. And it has everything to do with the size of his toolkit. <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing. <laughs> One of my staff members is pregnant, and there was a comment made on her ultrasound by the very feminine male technician that did the ultrasound. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. <laughs> we'll get some, we'll, hey, you cut them plastic bottles in half, sailor. Cut the plastic bottles in half. <laughs> Russia, Canada, Everything, the feminization, chemicals found in co food, cosmetics, and cleaning products are linked to the feminization of unborn boys, not to mention raising the risks of cancer and infertility later in life. I have relatives that are sterile, completely 100% sterile. They've never had any live stuff. Russia, Canada, and Italy are finding out that the more polluted the area is, there's twice as many girls as boys being born. And in fact, if anybody saw the thing about uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, what did the Pentagon say? What did the Pentagon say? Anybody catch it? It's right after the Simpson reruns. <laughs> after Bart said dough, they went right into that Pentagon story. They said one out of three of our males today would never qualify for the service. One out of three are completely unfit for the military. One out of three. <clears throat> Things to look for. <clears throat> and I tell you, this is lining all the cans. <clears throat> All the cans and bottles. The BPA is lining everything. Parabens, fungicides, 
thiolates. Now for you guys that want to take this a step further, if you Google the disappearing male, it's a BBC special, the disappearing male, it's 44 minutes long, it is an eye opener. What has absolutely happened to everybody? Next. There's so many birth control pills and hormones in the water treatment that the male bass have eggs in their testicles. Jeff, is that true? Jeff collects fish for the government, the Fish and Wildlife Service. That's what he goes out in the government boat. <clears throat> so, should I tell a story? Jeff, how, long, how often do you go out at the... Uh, at Lake Michigan at a time? About 90 days. About 90 days. How long was the boat sit at the dock? Uh, well, we were at the dock every night. Now, so Jeff is around a lot of times and he said, look, I'm not gonna see you guys for a couple of months because I'm going out. I want you to remember the cash for clunkers thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going out on the boat, the government boat, government laboratories he works for. I actually work for the USGS. He worked for these guys right here. Yeah. I didn't plan on telling this story. And you know what they started today? What? They're, they're poisoning the Mississippi River to get rid of the Asian carp. I'm sure it won't affect us. <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, they're using uh, rotenone, which is supposed to be something like, uh, you know, the uh, Roundup. It degrades in, in sunlight. Sure. Sure it does. Yeah. So the point is, Jeff says goodbye. I won't see you guys for a couple months because I got to get out on this government boat. Next week, we run into Jeff again. Well, what happened? All over the summer, he said boats broke. All the months, the boat sat at the dock, the government boat. They didn't fix it. They didn't fix it at all. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> so when they're ready to get out on the boat, nobody from the government bothered to fix the broken boat while it sat there with nobody on it. They waited till he drove all the way to? Sheboygan, Michigan. Sheboygan, did the boat work? No. <laughs> this is who they're gonna have in charge of our health. The boat sat there for the whole summer. Is this a true story? It is. <laughs> yes. I knew you'd get a kick out of it, that's why huh? I told you. So I knew you'd get a kick out of it, that's why I told you. Yes. <laughs> so. I got paid. Huh? No, somebody asked if I got paid. I said I got paid. Of course he got paid. It's the government. And we get to tease Jeff because he just said to me, he just said to me a couple weeks ago, he's a good sport. He, we kind of tease him, and he's, he actually tries to make a difference, so I can say this. He just looked at me a couple weeks, about a week ago, and said, we get $60 a day now in meal money. No, 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 no. I said 61 61 <laughs> Can you eat on $61 a day? Do you think you could you think you choke that down? And this is what the government's paying everybody. No, 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 no. No, no it was just in Charlevoix, Michigan. Just in Charlevoix, Michigan. It's tough to eat on $61 a day. So he orders his ramen noodles for two bucks, and he gets a pocket 56 bucks, 57 bucks. Is that true? Pretty much. Okay. I can see them when they run this health system. And I tell people, you want to know what it's like? How many veterans do I have in the crowd? What's it like to enjoy a VA hospital? How much fun is, how much is, it a, how much fun is the VA hospital? Just wait. Sit and wait. The doctors have no incentive to be good. You can't sue them, and you're on your own. You get a free swine flu shot. Fifty-one bucks a day. <laughs> I like that. Could your tap water Don't be? Don't give me any trouble. <laughs> I, I'm not. His, his name is Mike's. <laughs> <laughs> your tap water could be making you sterile. One of the things to pass. I am very fussy. Chemi what's an anti-androgen? Chemicals known. You got to see through this. Chemicals known as anti-androgens. 
anti, that's an estrogen. So an anti-androgen is going to be as simple as an estrogen. Birth control pills, uh, change of life stuff, all the plastics, chlorine, uh, lawn sprays, all the golfers, all those pesticides are estrogenic, all that kind of stuff, uh, the stuff you spray your house with for bugs, and I want to mention the company's names. Those are all estrogenics. Those are all estrogens. That's why you find them in breast tissue. That's what caused a huge problem with women having breast cancer. These are estrogen mimickers. They inhibit the biological effects. In fact, these anti-androgens are given to sex offenders when they're released from prison to decrease the male sex drive. And I don't want to get controversial, so I can't say who makes the BPA. But you'd find a very interesting relationship to a company in World War II that had some interesting chemicals. Next. <clears throat> I hate Brussels sprouts, broccoli. I don't like kale, Brussels sprouts, or broccoli. I don't think I ever ate one in my life. Unless somebody forced me to with some dip on it. This is some of our presents. I take, <clears throat> I take two of those. <clears throat> playing, I play in an adult draft league with a bunch of animals at hockey. I don't want to be the unusually happy guy in the locker room because it's a tough <laughs> league. It's a completely tough league. The cruciferous complex increased the rate of removal of excess estrogen from the body and the blood by 500%. Pesticides, lawn sprays, all this stuff is going the same way. Next. I hate green things. <clears throat> I'm watching Jay Leno. My buddy was on. Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Clear out the hormones. Come on. I'm going to put them on about eight of those. That's kind of funny. I haven't seen him since they let him out of rehab or wherever. <laughs> Took his computer away. So he was making a salad with Jay. And this is kind of, I, I, Jay, Jay's my guy. I liked what he said. So he's got this salad bar on stage. Did anybody happen to catch that? It was kind of, you caught that? Wasn't it funny? As, as, this, this is he has, he's got, I don't know why they were doing this, but they had this huge salad bar on stage, and Pee Wee's all excited in his little Pee Wee weirdo voice. <laughs> I'm going to make you a salad, Jay. So they go over to the salad bar and hand Jay, he hands him a plate, and he takes a plate. First, we're going to take lettuce. He puts the lettuce on the plate. And <clears throat> you want some lettuce, Jay? Nah, it's OK. Next, we're going to put cucumbers. And he scoops up the cucumbers, puts cucumbers on his salad. Do you want some cucumbers, Jay? Jay's like, nah, I'll skip the cucumbers. So they go to the next one, pulls up all the sprouts, and puts the sprouts on his plate. Jay, do you want some sprouts? He said, nah, I'll skip the sprouts. He said, look, let me tell you, I hate anything that comes from the earth. I don't like things that are green. And I went, yes. <laughs> yes. So they go down to the end, and Jay's plate is empty. Mine would probably be pretty empty by the time I got to the end. So he pokes, would you like a cookie? And he said, yeah, I suppose I'll try it. He said, look, I don't eat a lot of green stuff. I'm really healthy. It must work for me what I do. So he gets to the end. There's a cookie. Would you like a cookie, Jay? He said, yeah, I'll try that cookie. So he put, takes one cookie and clumps it on his plate. He picks up the cookie. He takes a bite into it, and Jay goes, that's a vegetable cookie. Clunk. Drops it on the plate and set the plate down. <clears throat> now, the point of that story is heirloom seeds. I take a scoop of this every day in my shake in the morning. This is about as green as I'm going to get. It's a huge th list of, my gosh, that's small, organic vegetable juices. It's acerola air berry. It's all the sprouts, the alfalfa sprouts. Man, it's tiny stuff. I think they write it so small we can't read it. The oats, the greens. Huh? Amen. 
That's my, there's the greenest thing I'm going to eat. And I'm going to choke that down in my, my monster shake every day. And that's it. I'm done with the greens for the day. I take this at lunch. <clears throat> Remember, this is what I want my kids. This is the estrogen removal, the pesticides, the chemicals. I don't want to look like this when I get old. I'm going to make a statement. If Muhammad Ali and Michael J. Fox took these two things, they would not shake. They were poisoned. They were completely poisoned. There's no such thing as Parkinson's. These people have been poisoned. Come in like this, I'm going to ask you two questions. You're full of metals or you're full of chemicals? What would you do for a living? Well, I was a welder. Yeah, you look like a welder. You should have taken your minerals to keep the welding gases out of your body or so that you could pass them through. You don't weld and inhale all that stuff without your body. You better, your body's a sponge. That's some of the things I'm going to talk about in my lecture about weight. You have to be very well nourished to not absorb the environment. So they have these to pass out. We got a bunch of these. I covered the other one. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> Breast, prostate, and other cancer. Remember, this is why this the cruciferous family. Now, not eating this in the fam, not eating this in your family, and taking antacids, antidepressants, or antihistamines. Not getting those, and taking one of those is why you have drunk driving tickets today. Those two things will cause your body to be poisoned. <clears throat> Because of the, the sorry shape of the men today, between the stress, the chemicals, and everything whacking these men, I was, where's Smiling Lou? <laughs> now, I always found there must, now first, this is for the men. You women can just, unless you're one of the lost boys, <laughs> that was a joke. It's interesting to watch all these commercials on TV for Viagra, for all these men pills, to make it quite simple. They have nothing to do with testosterone. It's amazing. Lots of people have had decent results. There's some side effects to it, but it's interesting because it doesn't involve hormones with what this pill does. It does two things. And to find a pill that does these two things the two things that all these things on TV, they increase nitric oxide levels, which relax the vessels all over the body. That's a blood pressure pill. And number two, the, the, the same thing that they do is they inhibit the enzyme phosphodiesterase. That's the enzyme that causes things to subside. You raise nitric oxide levels and you block phosphodiesterase. Now, because this is special, after the prizes are given out, Smiling Lou <laughs> is in charge of these. And <clears throat> he's going to ask some questions for patients only. It takes three months. In three months, <clears throat> three months at two a day, man had a 92.5% function that was considered normal. But it does it mimics the drugs safely. Very interesting. This is because of the, the, the hormonal overload to the men. Next. <clears throat> you know, God bless our service people. Because <clears throat> men have joined this for the right reasons and led astray by Big business. It's simply big business. If I was really felt that I had accomplished something positive for my country, I'd feel pretty good about myself, wouldn't you? I mean, I liberated a concentration camp or I freed up a village or something. I think it'd be a positive experience. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of chemicals they put them on, what kind of magic little potions they used. 
active and inactive military personnel. How many suicides do you think a day happens active and inactive military people? How many do you think a day? You can't answer because I told you. Huh? No, there'd be no people left. Uh, huh? Hit him. Elbow him. Elbow her then. Uh, average. Average. Eight, every day in this country, 18 active or inactive people commit suicide in the military. Uh, that's an average, 18 a day. <clears throat> Iraq and Afghanistan, we have had more people commit suicide than the enemy has killed. Just to put this in perspective, something strange is going on. This is very if I, if I, you know, I, I think these are the things our enemies would love to throw in our face. We're trying to save money. Next, God bless the service people. <clears throat> Dylan, how many cavities have you grown out of your teeth with that pill, would you guess? A lot. 70%, 80%. You can still do math, can't you? They taught that in gym, how many steps you had to walk or something. I don't know, over half of them. Amy was pregnant, and she had all these cavities in her mouth, and her dentist said, we'll come back after the baby, because we don't want to drill them, too. Amy grew every one of the cavities out of her mouth. This was the old time. I'm telling you, you guys could put your whole family on BioDent and save a fortune in your dental bills. You should see what that does to your teeth. If you gotta have roots in your teeth. If you have no roots, forget it. I had too many root canals by the time I understood. I had 15 root canals by the time anybody told me I was gassed before I got there. <clears throat> but you, dentin, that's half bone and half raw tooth. You, I, I, you could save a fortune in your big families by putting your kids on two or three biodent a day. I can't believe what a root canal and a crown cost today. And every tooth that they worked on went bad eventually anyway. Nothing. All I did was get temporary relief till it fell apart later. It never stopped falling apart. And for you older women, that pill is half osteoporosis and half tooth. Next. You remember the mad as heck guy? You can't. And you know, it's funny to go places and still hear people talk about staying. I want to show you the latest of the latest about this. The latest of the latest. Do you realize vitamin D would prevent 58,000 cases of breast cancer and 50,000 cases of colon cancer annually? Why do you think they told you to stay out of the sun? The numbers about what's coming out about vitamin D after watching everybody hide under an umbrella or on sunscreen is a complete disgrace. The researchers, this is the San Diego School of Medicine, 75% of deaths from these cancers could be prevented with adequate intake of vitamin D and calcium. Why do you think the blacks have such a high rate of colon cancer? Especially in the north. They get no sun. They don't get enough sun. Stay out of the sun. How can your doctor tell you to stay out of the sun? I, everybody stayed out of the sun. We've gone on trips with groups. And there the four of us are, basking in the sun. Everybody in Jamaica, the Bahamas, they're cowering under. They're completely covered, lathered up with hats on, shaking in the shade afraid to death that the sun's going to hit them. You need fats in your diet, the essential fatty acids, so I don't look like an old dead guy. That's why my dad looks so healthy. <clears throat> so my parents do this. Optimizing your vitamin D levels could prevent 16 different types of cancer. Pancreas, lung, ovary, prostate, and skin cancers. 16 cancers. The literature is overwhelming and everybody still sticks to 
Vitamin D can cut the overall cancer risk by as much as 60%. Next. <clears throat> Breast exposure, we covered that. 30% of the cancer deaths, which amounts to 2 million worldwide, could be prevented with vitamin D. I thank you. Uh, the two vitamin D, I'm outside as much as I can. I got to have sun. And I, I, when it's, I have to have sun. And every year that I get older, I have to have sun. And it's, it's simpler to me to try to take vitamin D than to buy a house in Florida that I have to go spend that on for three months just because I can't take it. And I'm getting to what, I have to, what I'm going to take. <clears throat> and I've got to go to Dearborn by 1030. Nick. If my mother or father called and said they were trying to have a heart attack, can you go back to that? <clears throat> That's nitro. I put the pro athletes on that. <clears throat> That's cataplex G is the dilating half of the B complex. So I'm going to dilate all my coronary arteries and cram oxygen into my heart. And that helps me attack at the end of the game when all these plugged up dudes are falling off the plate. And I play with a bunch of animals. The guys with, I, play, had a, I played with a patient Sunday night, a tough guy, he's a tough guy. He's one of the guys that doesn't wear a mask and I cracked him right across the nose at the end of the game. <laughs> cracked him right, I'm gonna send him a letter, wear a face mask. Uh, okay, next. 800 units per pill, 2,000 units per drop. I got tons of people on this for their spurs, for their moods, for a hundred different reasons. I got my parents on this year round. Next. Suggested dosages out of David Williams' journal. Remember, people say, how do you say all these things? Everything I talk about is referenced in the journals. That's the kind of levels you can use. Everything they told you is a lie. In fact, a lifeguard gets about 10,000 units a day. Next. They say, you ready for this? This is huge. Vitamin D, magnesium, and the essential fatty acids. Three things. Vitamin D, magnesium, and the essential fatty acids could save Medicare from being bankrupted. Three simple nutrients save the entire system. They can predict infant mor er, mortality in the intensive care unit by the vitamin D level. That's out of the New England Journal of Medicine. And your doctor is still going to tell you to stay out of the sun. Next. A 50% or greater reduction from the Lancet, breast, prostate, colon, esophagus, pancreas, ovary, rectum, bladder, kidney, lung, uterus, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, multiple myeloma. How many people know somebody that had one of these diseases? Everybody. I got people with them right now. <clears throat> Next, buy American. You know, for this Christmas season, I just bought a half a cow from some patients. Okay? It was a half a cow. <clears throat> My wife had to drive quite a ways to get that. And this, I'm gonna, this has a lot to do with weight issues, how your animals are fed. Next, I told you all kinds of crazy things going on now. Google Revelation Chronicles, unlocking the biblical code. Google that, or Google that. It's going to take you to my buddy's website. Watch the series. Watch the series. Shut off Family Guy. You've seen enough of this stuff. Watch the series. <clears throat> 
go into Smile and Lou, Smile and Lou, raise your hand. That's Smile and Lou, and he's going to ask you five questions. <clears throat> Very simple questions. Answer the five questions, you get an Asira. And Smile and Lou is the determiner for the pre locks and for the free Asira. Next. <clears throat> Between my T-bone and my two huge protein shakes today, I'm prepared to go for the attack. Tell me what time is it now. Okay, good. <clears throat> Next. I'm glad I've been trying to tell people when I read the National Cancer Institute's journal, and women say, <clears throat> should I take tamoxifen? It causes the opposite tumor. Not a positive, a negative one. An estrogen receptive negative tumor that's worse and harder to fix than the one that it protected you from. Why? because the world doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> and that's in the opposite breast. So they chop off the bad one, put you on this drug, and you get a tumor in the other breast worse than the one that you had in the first breast. And you can't fix the second one. Ah, what the heck. There's lots of people. I'm very fussy to detox my body. I'm not a big, I don't eat that well. I got to keep the chemicals on the run. <clears throat> Do you have vitamin D to pass out? We have these to pass out, vitamin D. <clears throat> How many biodents do we have? Five. Five large biodents. Before I get you know, any further, the Cataplex C, I want you to read the label on this. I'll take a handful of these. You can't overdo vegetable cultures for food-based C. And I can't forget, because I've done that before, to thank standard process. Derek, raise your hand in the back, dying to answer questions. <clears throat> Biotics, I want to thank Biotics. Todd, Todd's eating right now. He couldn't show up. Todd's resting. You don't want him to work too hard. Uh, next. Did I miss that optimal EFA one somewhere? That one. They got 10 of these to pass out. <clears throat> That's when we talked about the essential fatty acid. Remember, I can, you got to have a lot of good fats to handle the sun. When you tell me I get cooked in the sun, we take a ton of good essential fatty acids. This is one choice for certain types of cases. I take standard processes of some Lionel B6 and some tuna oil every day. I eat far too many crummy oils. I have to take the good ones. That's the only way I can tolerate the sun. If you don't get the essential fatty acids, you're going to fry in the sun. That's the secret to the sun. So if you don't get any good oils, you're going to cook out there. You got to have good oils in your diet. That's why the Mediterranean women and men look so beautiful. They're eating a ton of healthy oils all the time. They're not eating the oils they have over here, but they're getting there. My daily supplement thing. They have foot baths, which some of you people have tremendously enjoyed to detox. The liver patients detox very well. We have some of these to give out. <clears throat> The Asira, what there's a bunch of these to give out, watch that series, talk to Smile and Lou, answer your questions, and you can get an Asira. There's a fax sheet. And the, you know, this is, I'm right on time, aren't I? <clears throat> this is what the point was. Forget the Republicans and Democrats. You're not involved with the Republicans or the Democrats. There's one thing, the blacks, the whites, we have to keep in mind with our system of government here. Right now, <clears throat> you've seen about every one of the Bill of Rights attacked. There's two hanging by a thread. Everyone's been stomped on. 
right to bear arms, and freedom of religion. Those are the only two that have not been trampled yet. Yet. Two. So I try to show you folks some interesting things. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a site, and I want to leave you with something very special before Lou comes up here and directs the prizes and all the stuff. And I have to go to this. I'm fresh off the hat trick, so I'm going to try to get another one. <laughs> so I want to thank all you people for braving this horrible weather. I left everything up here. Lou's going to pick up from here. And I want you to watch this and see what we have to do to try, try to preserve our nation together. Roll them. If the United States doesn't have its Bill of Rights and Constitution, it doesn't exist anymore. It's just more real estate, more dirt. And that's what these global corporatists want. They want to completely dismantle the Bill of Rights and Constitution, and they're doing that right now. This is the fall of the Republic. Our nation is dying. We the people that live in this fine country need to stand up, get involved, and take the system back. It's the Bill of Rights and Constitution that we owe allegiance to, not to a political party, and not to politicians that wrap themselves in the red, white, and blue, while at the same time, they destroy everything that that sacred flag stands for.